Good morning and welcome to worship at Lafayette First United Methodist Church. We're so glad that you've joined us this morning and I'll share a few announcements to start off our service. I'd like to invite everyone to our Ash Wednesday service on Wednesday, March the 2nd at 7 p.m. Before that service, we'll have our uh, pancake dinner fundraiser. So that fundraiser is for our children and our youth ministries and will be uh, it's by donation only and it will go from 6 to 7 p.m. and you can come in and have some pancakes and enjoy some time. This is our... Uh, uh, Fat Tuesday celebration within the church, but even though it's on the Wednesday, but uh, you can come to that service or that fundraiser, and then right afterwards you can attend the Ash Wednesday service at 7 p.m., and our children and youth will also be leading that Ash Wednesday service. So we hope that you will come on Wednesday, March the 2nd, 6 o'clock for the pancake dinner, and 7 p.m. for the Ash Wednesday service. Next, I'd like to just share that our children's choir is going wonderful, and we have named our children's choir Jubilee Kids Choir, 
and it's just a wonderful time for the kids to get together in fellowship and to sing, and we're really looking forward to our Children's Sunday, which will be on Sunday, March the 27th. Our children are going to be leading that service, and it'll be a wonderful time, so I hope that you'll mark your calendars to come and support our children, and then if you have a child or a grandchild, we'd love to have them involved in Children's Choir, and so uh, we meet Wednesdays at 5.30, we provide a meal, and then at 6 o'clock is when practice starts, so uh, everything from food and practice is from 5.30 to 6.30 on Wednesday nights. So we invite you to join us. And lastly, our youth are on their ski retreat this weekend. And we ask that you just continue to offer your prayers for safe travel and for them to stay safe on the slopes and just to have a good time uh, growing in their faith as well as just having a good time with their families. So thank you for praying for that. Those are all of our announcements this morning. Welcome to worship. Good morning, church. If you are seeking a place for God to plant you to grow, we invite you to take a look at Lafayette First United Methodist Church. We are located at 301 South Main Street here in Lafayette, Georgia. We have two services, 9 a.m., which is downstairs. It's a contemporary service. Come as you are, casual dress. Then at 11 a.m., we have a traditional worship service upstairs. Between 9 a.m. and 11 a.m., we have a 10 o'clock Sunday school class for all ages. If we have the opportunity of wor worshiping with you online or on WQCH, we want to thank you for giving us the opportunity of being with you today. Welcome. Hear these words, the call to worship. Take delight in the Lord, who satisfies the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord and trust in God's actions. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for God. The Lord is our salvation and our refuge in times of trouble. Let us worship the Lord together. Let us unite in this historical confession of the Christian faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Good morning, children. And today we're going to be talking out of the book of Luke or the gospel of Luke, and it's going to be about how we should love our enemies. And I know that's a really tough thing to do is to love someone that hates you or that tries to hurt you. But God says that we should love everyone and even our enemies. We should love them. And at the end of that verse, it talks about forgiveness. And I really wanted to focus on the forgiveness part today. And so I have a little thing with me this morning, and it's called an Etch-A-Sketch. And what you do is you move the little dials, and it makes a, a picture on there and has a bunch of lines. You can do a cool picture. But one really cool thing about this is that if you shake it, it erases it. And so all the marks that you made are not on there anymore. And I think this is a really cool picture of how God forgives us and how we should also forgive others. And at the end of Luke, it says that we should not judge others, we should not condemn others, and we should also forgive, and then we will be forgiven. And it's an important thing to remember that forgiveness is something that we should do all the time. That at all times, our relationships are not going to be great, and things are going to be up and down and good and bad. And to remember that even when we mess up ourselves and when we need to forgive ourselves that God forgives us. And because God forgives us, we should also forgive others. And in the gospel, and in the, the passage today that Pastor Randall is going to be preaching out of in Genesis, it's in, about the life of Joseph and how Joseph's brothers were super evil and mean to him. And they threw him in a pit and sold him into slavery. And then all of these bad things happened. And then years later... Who is back together? Joseph and his brothers. And so Joseph is given the task of, hey, should I love my brothers? Should I forgive my brothers? Or Joseph had the power to condemn his brothers, to punish his brothers if he wanted to. 
because of the, the famine that was in the land and his brothers were looking for food. But Joseph knew how God works and Joseph knew that God works all things together for the good of those who love him. And so Joseph chose to forgive his brothers, to show them kindness and compassion and mercy, just like God forgives us and shows us kindness, compassion, and mercy. And so my prayer today is Pastor Randall's preaching, and as we look about forgiving, that we would first forgive ourselves and realize that God has forgiven us, that God has wiped our slate clean, and that we should also forgive others by loving them even when they do things that are bad and know that God will work all things together in, for his good and for our good in our lives. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you so much just for this wonderful morning and this wonderful chance of forgiveness. Lord, I pray if there's something that we have done, a mistake that we have made or a sin that we have committed, Lord, help us to confess that and to Forgive ourselves of our past mistakes so that, Lord, we are able to then forgive others and show them your love. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a blessed week. Hear these words, the call to confession. Jesus promised us that God is kind, even to the ungrateful and the wicked, even to us. Trusting God's kindness and love, let us confess our sin. Pray with me this prayer of confession. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your ways or trusted your promises. We love only those who love us. We show kindness only to those who are kind to us. We give only when we are expected to receive. Forgive us, Lord. Fill our hearts with your selfless love. Change our lives by your matchless grace. These things we pray through Christ our Savior. Hear these words, the Declaration of Forgiveness. Children of the Most High God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, we have received grace in good measure, spilling out and running over. Thanks be to God. Now live as Christ commands. Be merciful as God is merciful. Do not judge and you will not be judged. Do not condemn and you will not be condemned. But forgive and you will be forgiven. Give and it will be given to you. Hear this prayer of confession. Let us offer our intercessions to God, saying, God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, your cross stands before us as a light that shows us our failures and our salvation through your Son. We thank you for forgiving and for coming among us to heal our pain and resentments. We yearn for your word and praise you for your love. We pray together. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You who preserves life, who sins among your people, caretakers and peacemakers, make our gratitude so profound that with joy we will love and guard what you have created for our very lives. We pray together and say, God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh, giver of prayer that groans within us, Teach us to pray for our enemies, and we whisper some of them now before you in our hearts. Be with them, guard them from harm, and guide them in the way of your light. Save us from self-righteousness, and help us begin our lives anew. Pray with me by saying, God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heal the nations, mighty Lord. Bring peace on all people. Give hope to the hopeless and love to the lonely. Surprise the leaders of all nations with your joy. For the people we cry out for reconciliation and plenty. Pray with me by saying, God in your mercy, hear our prayer. We beg comfort for the sick, O oh God. Make the whole the broken. Make wise the foolish. Humble the powerful. Make glad the hearts of those who tend our loved ones, and for any who are in pain, give them release and rest. Now hear, O God, the prayers of this assembly, spoken silently or aloud. Pray with me. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Savior of the world, we give you thanks for the church. 
for the meek, for the courageous, for those who teach us how to wait. Pray with me by saying, God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Trusting in the mercy of your never-failing wisdom, we command into your hands all for whom we pray. We ask all these things in the name of Christ, who is our Savior, and our Lord, who taught us to say when we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Hear this prayer for illumination. Gracious God, you by your word, you provide all we need for salvation, for wholeness, for abundant life. Now draw us close in your spirit so that we may discover your will and live according to your purposes. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear these words according to Genesis 45, 3 through 11 and verse 15. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. It is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him, so dismayed were they at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, Come closer to me. And they came closer. He said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. 
And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here, for God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are five more years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh and lord of all his house and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hurry and go up to my father and say to him, Thus says your son Joseph, God has made me lord of all Egypt. Come down to me. Do not delay. You shall settle in the land of Goshen, and you shall be near me, you and your children and your children's children, as well as your flocks, your herds, and all that you have. I will provide for you there, since there are five more years of famine to come, so that you and your household and all that you have will not come to poverty. Verse 15. And he kissed all his brothers and wept upon them. After that, his brothers talked with him. These are the words of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. When I say a coat of many colors, who comes to mind? If you are a country music fan, you may think of Dolly Parton. As well as if you are a Genesis fan, you may say Joseph. Well, our scripture reading today isn't about Dolly Parton, even though she is an inspiration. Today, our biblical story is about Joseph. For in Genesis 45, we're sort of dropped right into the middle of the story, for we find Joseph sitting second in command to Pharaoh, only one above him, and that is Pharaoh himself. Joseph is a person that we read about all through uh, the book of Genesis, uh, we hear the phrase, and God was with him. A phrase that you and I need to remember, a phrase that we need to apply to our own life for if we are in a relationship with God and Christ, then God is with us too. All through our life, whatever we may experience in life, whatever may happen to us or whatever may happen in life, we are in need of believing and trusting that God is with us. You and I will have many opportunities to uh, remember that and to live that out in our relationship with one another. Someone once said, love your neighbor as well as your enemy because sometimes your neighbor and your enemy are the same person. In Joseph's family, he discovered that he wasn't always liked. As a young person, he had dreams, and he shared those dreams with his brothers and his parents. You will recall that at one time he had a dream of his sheaves standing up straight, and his brother's sheaves bowed down to him. Of course, he was younger than his brothers, and for the younger to be served by the older, that just wasn't the way it happened, even though their father, Jacob, was told that by his mother, who communicated that, uh, who was communicated that by God, who God told Jacob's mother that the older would serve the younger. Joseph also shared with his parents about the moon and the stars bowing down to him. And his father said, will your mother and I and your brothers also serve you? It says that uh, Joseph's father remembered those words and kept them to himself. Later on, we find out that these dreams that Joseph had does come to pass. And, of course, they come to pass in the land of Egypt. For we discover that in the younger years, his brothers, who become very jealous of him, sell him into slavery. And then Potiphar buys Joseph from the Ishmaelites that his brothers sold him to. 
and Potiphar's wife, who wanted Joseph more than Joseph wanted her, gets him in trouble and has him thrown in jail because of a lie. And the scriptures continue to say about all that Joseph goes through, and God was with Joseph. I've heard preachers say, I'm sure Joseph wished that God was with someone else, because if God is with you and this is what happens to you, then do we really want God to be with us or not? God is the kind of God who wants us to share the good news because he wants to bless us to be a blessing, even though there are times when we may not be greatly appreciated for what God has us to give to another. Joseph had a life where he was going to save the lives of his brothers and his family, but of course, no one really knew that in the beginning. God knew it because God was with Joseph and God was going to lead Joseph and would be with Joseph and Joseph would experience God's presence, but he would also experience temptation, tribulation, all of the things that happens to a person when God is with you, especially if God has a task for you to do and a role for you to play. Not everybody's going to see it. Not everyone's going to believe it. I mean, even yourself, you might even have a hard time of believing what God is calling you to do. You may not feel like you're worthy or that you're capable. But as you and I remember, God doesn't call the qualified. He yeah, qualifies the called. Well, when Joseph reaches second in command to, to Pharaoh, his family is hungry. And of course, there is bread in Egypt. The Pharaoh had a dream, and his people could not interpret his dream, so the butler, <laughs> we always remember the butler did it. Well, the butler does it here. He remembers Joseph and tells the Pharaoh that there is someone who's been thrown in prison who he heard interpret dreams, and they came true that maybe he could interpret the dream of Pharaoh. So Pharaoh said, go get him, and he did. And Joseph interpreted the Pharaoh's dream Saw some skinny cows and some well-fed cows. And of course, Jacob talked about the lean years and the uh, bountiful years. And of course, they all came true, which made Joseph the Lord of Pharaoh's land and the father of Pharaoh, according to Scripture. When Joseph's brothers, who thinks he's dead or thinks that he has gone away and that they'll never see him again, goes to Egypt, there is Joseph, second in command to Pharaoh. They don't recognize Joseph, but Joseph recognizes them to such a degree that it grieves Joseph's heart because as a result of what his brothers did, it has cost them time together. He has missed them, and his father, you will recall that when Joseph was born, his father was in his older years. That's what the word Joseph means, father in my older years. Also, Joseph was um, a son of Rebecca. You will recall that uh, Rebecca was one wife, if not the only one, that um, Jacob's father, Joseph, um, Jacob loved. He loved Rebecca. And of course, Benjamin was the other son that Rebecca had. So some believe that the reason he favored Joseph and made him that coat of many colors or that coat with sleeves, they say, is because, well, maybe Joseph reminded his dad of his mom. You know, some of us look like our mom. Some of us look like uh, our dads. The other day we were sitting at the table and Mary said to Timothy, hold, hold your hands up. And he held them up like this. And Mary told me to hold my hands up. And she said, your son has your hands. I wonder if Joseph reminded Jacob of Rachel in a similar way. Maybe not. Maybe so. Whatever, he favored Joseph. And it caused his brothers to be jealous. And as a result, they sold him into slavery to get rid of him, as you recall. They took that coat of many colors. They put goat blood on it. They took it back to Joseph's dad and said, Joseph was attacked, he's dead, an animal ate him, and his father grieves, and says that he'll never be happy until he meets his son in the grave. 
Joseph goes through the life that he does with Potiphar's wife. He prospers in whatever he does until he gets to that point of being second in command with the Pharaoh. His sons, his, his brothers come back to him. They come back to Egypt to get more bread, and there he is. And of course, Joseph is going to confront them. He's going to make them face uh, something that they believed. You know, someone said that the worst lie you can believe is your own. But here's his brothers who looks at him, and they don't see Joseph, but he sees them. And he has them to come closer, and he reveals himself to them. He says, I am Joseph, your brother. I'm the one whom you sold in slavery. Well, they were shocked. They couldn't believe that he was in the position he was in. They couldn't believe that he was still alive, maybe, or that he was there, that they had to confront him. I mean, all the, the lies that they told his father that he was dead. And I mean, his, his father believed them. So they've been living a lie. I'm sure they've been thinking about Joseph, maybe, or maybe not. Maybe they've been thinking about their father, or maybe not. But now they're going to have to face this lie that they convinced their father of. And that was that Joseph is dead, but he's not dead. He's second in command to Pharaoh. And Joseph wants his dad and his family to come to Egypt where he is because he says that he was put there by God to save a remnant. You will recall that Jacob's sons is the tribes of Israel because he had 12 sons. So he tells his brothers to go back and to get his father and to bring him there so that he may take care of him and take care of his family. What do we gain from the story? Where are we in this story? Well, the scripture says that God was with Jacob. I wonder if you and I ever think about God being with us. I wonder if we ever think about the things that we go through, if God is involved in it. I mean, Jacob said, don't blame yourself because of me being here. God is the one who brought me here. You and I recall that Jacob at one time said, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. I, I wonder how many of us have experienced that. I wonder how many times you and I have experienced things in this world where maybe it was meant for evil for you and me, but God brought good out of it, and as a result, God was blessed, God's name was glorified, and God did that through us or through another. I wonder how many times that's happened to you and me. I wonder how many times you and I think about God being with us. I wonder if we think about that today. Where, where are we today, and what do we contribute God to doing and getting us where we are? I think about that when it comes to my son, Timothy. When we came to Walker County, we discovered a place and a program called Project Search. And when Timothy went through that, we also recognized that there was a person at Unique Fabricating Incorporated who had dealt in a family situation concerning children with disabilities. And this so happened to be a supervisor that worked at Unique. Would be Timothy's supervisor, would be able to communicate with Timothy and to be able to help Timothy. And we've always wondered, was God's hand in it? Many people would say, yes, he was. Many people have said to me when I have shared that story, sounds like a God thing to me. How God spoke through many people to get Timothy to Unique. And there he's been for three years. I wonder how many of us can hear stories like that and think to ourselves, that's a God thing. I wonder how many of us consider that in our own life, where we are today. Can we go back and look and see God's hand in our life? Can we see God drawing us, wooing us to follow God? Can we see things in our life that we thought at one time wasn't of God because, I mean, how could it be? Yet it was. I wonder if Joseph ever felt that way. I wonder if he felt that way concerning Potiphar's wife, that all that he was 
going through, being thrown in jail and remaining there. I wonder if he ever thought if he had been forgotten. I wonder how many times you and I have been through life wondering if all the stuff that we've gone through, if, if we think that God has forgotten us. Will God ever remember us? Will there be someone in our life like the butler who remembered Joseph and said to the Pharaoh, what about Joseph? I wonder if we have had people in our lives like the butler who remembered us, who brought us. I had that in my life at one time. When I felt the call to preach, I went before the congregation as it is supposed to be in the Methodist Church and it was voted that I would be accepted as a candidate and I, I never went back. It, a year passed and then they had a, another charge conference and the superintendent uh, who was there was the same one who was there when I was granted candidacy. I wasn't present at that charge conference, but he said, where's that Massengill boy? He remembered me. Later, I was called, and I was offered a church. I want you to know that that scared me to death. And I want you to know that there was a time when I turned it down. I had a chance. I turned it down. But then I got another chance. And I took a deep breath, and I said yes. That was 40 years ago. And I can look back over my college experience, seminary experience, marriage experience, becoming a father experience, and seeing the hand of God in it all, and bringing me to this place where I am today. But many people expect that if you're a preacher, they expect God's hand to be in your life, because I mean, you're a preacher, wouldn't God's hand be in your life. But I have also learned as a pastor that God's hand is in a lot of people's lives, more than just a preacher's life. I bet God's hand is in your life. I bet he is with you. I bet you can look back over your life and say, this happened to me and that was a God thing, or that happened to me and though it wasn't good, God brought good out of that. And here I am today, and if it wasn't for the Lord, I wouldn't be where I am. You see where God is in your life. God is still there, still wooing you, still drawing you, still doing things in your life that surprises you. Today, I ask you and I ask myself, where is God in your life? Joseph could look back over his life and Maybe not at a certain time, but he couldn't see God. But there came times when he could look back and say, there was God. He delivered me. He saved me. And look where I am today. As a result of God, I can feed my brothers. I can be reunited with my father. We can face the truth together and we can get through it. We don't have to live a lie anymore. We can tell the truth and survive. I can trust myself with the truth. I can trust my father with the truth. I can trust my brothers with the truth. I can help them forgive themselves. I can encourage them to forgive themselves. I can forgive myself for the thoughts that I've had concerning what my brothers have done to me, I'm sure Jacob said. I can get past all of this. I don't have to live in the past. I can look to the future. I can look at God and God can bring me where I am to where he would have me to be. So today, brothers and sisters, when we think about this story of Jacob and where he is today and as a result of God bringing him where he is, I ask you and me to think about our own lives today. Where is God in your life? Where is God in my life? And how has he gotten us to where we are today? I ask you to think about that today and to make sure that you and I continue to believe that he hasn't left us, he hasn't forsaken us, he hasn't forgotten us. We may forget him, but he never forgets us. May you and I continue to follow him 
And if you and I are at a place where we used to follow him, but maybe something happened where we just have stopped, I ask you and me to reevaluate our lives and to begin following him again because he's still working in our life. He's still working on me, we say, creating in us the person he wants us to be. May you and I believe that today and trust that today. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.